Hearing voices in the absence of any speaker, or what in medical parlance is known as an auditory verbal hallucination, is usually associated with severe mental illness, diagnoses such as schizophrenia. And in fact, around 70% of people with schizophrenia will hear voices. But so will people in a whole range of other psychiatric groups, such as eating disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, and the list goes on. There's a significant minority of people who don't have any psychiatric illness who hear voices quite regularly. And beyond that, something between 5 and 15% of the general population will have occasional voice hearing experiences at some point in their lives. So what's the link between this everyday inner speech that you and I do for much of the day and this more unusual and often very troubling and distressing experience of hearing voices? Well, the idea is actually quite simple. The idea is that when somebody hears a voice, what's actually happening is that they're producing some inner speech. They're saying something to themselves, but for some reason, they're not recognizing it as something they themselves have done. They're not recognizing it as their own work. And so it's experienced as a voice from elsewhere, an alien voice, a voice that doesn't belong to them. This is quite a nice, simple model. It's been backed up by research in psychology and in neuroscience. There are quite a few problems with it, but it's a good starting point for research. We're finding that the new methods of neuroscience are helping us to understand what happens in the brain when people hear voices. So the idea is that when, you, when someone hears a voice, they're producing some inner speech, but for some reason not recognizing it as something they themselves have produced. And we can pin this to particular parts of the brain a part here towards the front on the left, which we know is important in generating speech, and a part further, slightly further back in the temporal lobe, which we know is important in recognising speech. And neuroscientific studies have shown that the usual method of communication between these two areas of the brain doesn't work in quite the same way in people who hear voices. And that might give us a way of understanding why this unusual treatment of inner speech occurs. Having said that, there are weaknesses with the inner speech model of hearing voices. We need to think about the role of memory, we need to think about social factors, all sorts of other things need to come into our understanding of voice hearing. Hearing voices is a very complex, varied and not particularly well understood phenomenon. It's also one that's highly stigmatised. If you think about the way it's treated in the, in the media, in Hollywood movies for example, it's given a very negative treatment. What's changed in the last 25 years or so has been the growth of an international hearing voices movement where people who hear voices have been getting together and reclaiming the meaning of their experiences and taking it back from a very narrow biomedical psychiatric perspective. This has been a life-changing moment for many people who hear voices because there is now a huge amount of support out there including peer support people getting together to talk about their experiences in a non-judgmental way so there's lots of information out there there are lots of resources out there plenty of positive news coming out about voice hearing research